Cuba Ports Authority is ready to make its move to Barcadera. Plus, in today's lifestyle segment, we'll tell you when not to go to the grocery store to prevent from picking up junk food. And a local singer-songwriter pursuing her master's in studio engineering plans on developing young local Aruban talents. 15 on 15 starts right now. Hi everyone, I'm Yantalu. Since August 1997, the plan to build a port at Barcadera started. Aruba Ports Authority's move is finally set to be executed. After an extensive process of settling proper financing and public bids, the execution of the Barcadera multi-cargo project is ready. After the completion of a third tender process, we are ready to begin the necessary work to move the container port to Barcadera. This is a milestone in the development of our port, but also in the development of the area of Barcadera. The port has always played a key role in our island's growth and development, beginning with our early days as a small trading post. Today, our port remains as a pillar of our economy, providing critical connectivity to global markets and bringing in close to 90% of imports and goods needed by our local economy and population. The managing director of Aruba Ports Authority says in order to improve, you must invest. This 110 million florin project is expected to bring a tremendous economic return. To promote Aruba's attractiveness, as a regional feed of port, we must continue to invest in port infrastructure ahead of demand and ensure that our port remains highly efficient and competitive. This is why despite the current uncertainties in world economies, we are ready to begin. We are ready to begin the necessary work to move on and to move the container terminal from the port of Orangesta to the port of Barcadera. With this move, it means there will be a lot more space for the port in Orangistad. With cargo out of the way, the downtown location will focus mainly on cruise ships, meaning improvements can be made. The project that is very, very important um, to the island of Aruba, the economy of Aruba, but also the change that we're making when you come to the infrastructure of Aruba, make it, making it uh, more practical and more effect, effective and efficient. Um, once we move out of um, the harbor that we now are using, which is the cruise ship harbor and the container harbor, once we move out, the cruise ship um, industry will also get a lot more oxygen to, to, to develop and to even uh, increase business from the cruise ship tourism. According to the advisory team of the Barca Data Project, logistically speaking, their knowledge and expertise were put to the test. I have to be very honest and sincere that when we started, it was really uh, what we call a nautical jargon for us. As member of this supervisory board, you have to understand this is really nautical. And for us, it was really a uh, time of education also. So along the path, it was a really long, long journey for us. And you have to understand, we took as a uh, supervisory board the task very seriously, especially we have to be maintaining the infringe against the law, the code of good governance and also the procedures involved. There is a lot riding on this project. Many people in the field of cargo are expecting results. Endless possibilities are being promised. Some more perspective to the bigger picture. The Barcadera Monte Cargo Terminal will also bring about other economic benefits to our country. Moving the industrial part of the harbor out of Oranjestad makes very important real estate as the minister said just now available, available for development in Oranjestad. The Aruba Ports Authority can soon improve and expand, can improve and expand the, ship uh, the cruise ship facilities in Oranjestad. At present, the Bushiri Hotel ruins are being torn down to make room for a new hotel and soon the old free zone buildings and containers will also vanish from that important location. The Barca Data Project is scheduled to be completed somewhere in 2015. When we come back, we'll have your lifestyle segment where we'll tell you when you should prevent from going to the grocery store. Also, what women in the office need to stop doing in order to gain more respect. And why is money so important in a relationship? It's not what you think. All that is coming up.
Don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. You'll end up buying a lot more than you actually need. But there's another time when you shouldn't hit the store, and that is when you've had a bad night of sleep. Here's why. You are more likely to buy high calorie foods after you've skimped on sleep. A lack of sleep messes with your self control, so you are more likely to give in to whatever your stomach craves. The good and the bad, rather than reaching for healthy foods. Think about it this way one bad day of sleep could get you eating junk food all week long if you choose to go to the store on that particular day. So choose a good time to hit the store to prevent from setting yourself up to go on an unhealthy shopping spree. Professional ladies, take this next fact into consideration. If women want to be seen as a strong leader in the workplace, we need to stop worrying so much. This is the conclusion that came out of a recent report. When you worry, you are perceived as weak. Let's face it, to some people at least, worrying equals being fearful, and fear is not exactly seen as desirable leadership quality. Number two, worrying causes you to lose credibility. The more you worry, the less decisive you seem. Worrying also makes you second guess yourself. But most importantly, worrying slows you down. When you are stressed about a plan or decision, your impulse is to brief yourself more thoroughly, review the data, analyze all the options. So in other words, you'll ponder rather than act. Now, as unromantic as it may sound, financial compatibility is one of the best predictors of relationship happiness. A new survey found that only 5% of people say money is an important consideration when choosing a partner. Yet 40% admitted they don't fully trust their significant other with their combined finances. Couples argue about money an average of five times per year. This makes sense. Now, of course, when you are still dating, certain money habits that you find attractive in your boyfriend or girlfriend now may drive you crazy in a husband. So you will want to stay a few steps ahead. Think about it. Who wouldn't love being pampered by a guy who takes you out to dinners and surprises you with awesome jewelry? But you definitely feel differently about it if those pricey earrings came from your joint bank account. So be aware of that. We will be right back. Stay with us. An Aruban singer-songwriter who is currently in Holland pursuing her master's in studio engineering and production is hoping to return to the island once she graduates to develop young local talent. Here's her story. Millie Ras has collaborated with one of the lead singers of Caché, Ir Saiz. She has launched a Papimento single entitled La Ganan, based on her own life. Through the lyrics, she wants listeners to grasp one message. Love doesn't have an age. If your partner is happy, you're happy, the family and the people around you are happy with the relationship, nobody else matters. It's all about uh, the, your partner and you. With the launch of the single, a music video is also available. Once Millie graduates with her masters, she plans on returning to the island to scout out local talent and help them record singles at a very reasonable price. I've been taking these kids from school. After school, you know, they always tend to hang around the, 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 the schoolyard and looking for problems and things. But I used to take some that I heard that they were talented and record their songs and broadcast it. And, you know, I used to help them a little bit. So I want to do that, but now in a professional way. I want them to branch out. And here in Aruba, I'm going to just say a price for one song. It starts by, by somebody popular, if you want to say. 8,000 gilles for one song. That's ridiculous. Because you're working with Arubans. Arubians and Arubians are supposed to help each other to reach far. We're working for Aruba. They look at it as a business. I look at it as my passion. This is my passion. If you love what you do, you, you need to start doing it with love too and stop looking at the zeros. The Ruben songwriter and singer says this small little island has a tremendous amount of talent. 
She has seen it, but she says the problem is there is a lack of possibilities to help these kids grow and to showcase what they have. Always, when you turn on the radio, it's always the same bands, the same kind of music. Actually, I think they, they broadcast more, the, 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 they play more the music from outside Aruba than the ones from Aruba self. You, you're constantly hearing this, this American artist, and what about the Arubians? And then I say, they want to say that the Arubian kids don't do nothing. I, I want to I wanna ask one of the people them outside there, go in any school, ask who can sing, and listen to their voice. I did that. It's amazing. Aruba, Aruba has a lot, a lot, a lot of talent. And it's a pity that we own Arubians that have the means to help these kids aren't doing it. If you are interested in the single, you can check out Millie's Facebook page at Melody Ras. That is our show for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here with a brand new edition of the show starting Friday night at 7.15 p.m. We'll see you then.